Okay, Ben. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna get this uh, <laughs> tea off my face. <laughs> All right, let's roll. <laughs> you, got some, you got some up here. Right? I got some. Thanks, okay. Kate. Appreciate it. Lauren's back. Just on my All right, we're good. Right. We're let's good. roll. So we, right. do you have an off-season spoiler? What are we going to be talking about for the next six months? All right, so here's the thing. Last summer, um, we walked into the off-season. And during, the, I guess, the college season, getting ready for bowl games, Christian McCaffrey, you know, he was like that name. And we were talking about him kind of stealing everybody's, um, I guess, fanfare. And then... He got on, he started releasing these videos. We saw quick footwork, and we saw pictures, great. throwback of him and Reggie Bush, and then we heard about him at practice. Like, oh my goodness, this guy's lighting it up. He's doing everything. He's running between tackles. He can catch out of the backfield. And then I thought to myself, all right, there has to be somebody the following season. I mean, history always repeats itself. Mm -hmm. So that same hype, that same energy, that same fanfare, we're going to bring to another running back, Penn State running back, Saquon Barkley, Ooh. and I will say it right here, right now, when it all goes down, when it's all said and done, Saquon Barkley will be the most popular Barkley of all time. <laughs> okay. Whoa. All right, I, go no, I get it. Charles Barkley, one of my favorite guys the in the legend. world. He's top 50 NBA, Hall of Famer, one of the best to ever do it and not win a ring. But listen, Saquon, what I've seen from this young man in college and what he can bring to the table, and more recently, with the guys that were selected early in the draft and the production they give us on the field, Ty Gurley, Melvin Gordon, took him a year, but he's balled out. You look at Leonard Fournette, the list goes on and on and on. For me, it's about running backs and... KB, mm -hmm. you're the resident running back here. Mm -hmm. Running backs are back, baby. He does it all. He's a kick returner. But Nate, listen, the most famous Barkley, because I mean, you got Charles, yeah. you got Matt, you got Matt, you got Gnarls. Oh, like, Gnarls. I'm a Gnarls guy. Does that make me crazy? I don't no. know. <laughs> Barkley, the dog from Sesame Street. A lot of Barkleys out there, Nate. And Char Sir Charles, high praise. Yeah, Peter, yeah. I, so you're saying he's going to be first team all OTAs? Like, yeah, hey, all OTAs. We, we'll just, we, we can't stop talking about him and gushing about him. We're going to be salivating trying to get him on the field for the regular season. It's going to be interesting at the, at the combine now. He's represented by the same folks who represent Leonard Fournette okay. and Todd Gurley. So mm -mm. he, he kind of okay. decided that's where I'm going to go. I want to go to the running back position. Um, there are a bunch of running backs in this draft, and you know how it goes. You get a lot of hype early. Someone shows up at the combine and starts getting more. It's going to be fascinating to see mm. where he goes overall. It's going to be like a top ten situation. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. Yeah. Michael first situation? overall. Yeah, he could go he first, first overall. That makes, that makes overall. me nervous. Cleveland taking him makes me nervous because I love Saquon. I love T. Rich. Everybody Trent loved T. Rich. He looked like an absolute animal. The only guy who didn't love him was Jim Brown. He turned out to be right. Taking a running back that high is really rolling the dice. Giants at two, Colts at three. All could be options for Saquon Barkley. Love that. Spoiler alert. The Patriots are going to trade up and take a quarterback in the first 10 picks. Wow. Okay. I like it. Well, you look at the quarterbacks. You tell me. I know the mock drafts is kind of early, but you have your Josh Allen, who actually thinks a great fit for them, Sam Darnold, Josh Rosen. They're all going to be taking top 10, right? I know, I even though now they're saying, oh, second round. No. We know how this works, right, Trakes? <laughs> yeah, I feel like top 10, top 15 for all those guys. Yes. Right. So the Patriots have one pick in the first round, the 31st overall pick, then two picks in the second round. So it's the Patriots thing to do to wait and take a quarterback later on in the draft. But I think Josh McDaniels, and I'm totally making this up, but I think that his, I like it. part I like of his so. deal of like, I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to go. I'm going to put my whole reputation out the window, up in flames, is that I'm going to stay. I'm going to get the keys to the Ferrari. I'm going to have the Patriots, and I want my guy now. I want to start developing my guy. You got rid of Jimmy Garoppolo. Brissett is gone. I like a guy in this draft. That went into the decision to stay in New England. Mm. We're going to trade up, and I'm going to get... The guy out of the Wyoming wants to play for the Browns. Sorry, ah. kids, you're not playing for the Browns. You're playing for the Patriots. <laughs> now, you remember the last quarterback when Josh McDaniels was the head coach who we took in the first round that everyone was like, what? Timothy yeah. Richard Tebow. Tim Tebow. Yeah. Now, I... I love this I just guy. think the clipboards are going to be out in a big way. All the cameras at the Combine are, and through the draft process are going to be on the Patriots because I think it's going to be a huge deal. Mm -hmm. who, who is the quarterback that they're drafting to be the heir to Tom Brady who probably will win another Super Bowl next year because he will have that, that young in yeah. this year like he had Jimmy Garoppolo who upped his game well, when he got drafted. I would love to see the Josh McDaniels sales pitch to Belichick. But here's what we're going to do, Coach. I know you, we need a safety or something. Right. Let's get another quarterback. Well, so i got to think about long term. <laughs> but right, what if right, Belichick's right. like, no, 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 I'm still here. And now he's thinking, I'm not going to be here for five Years. I want to win now. I'm not drafting mm -hmm. the quarterback of the future. Right. Possibly. I have a first pick in Which the first round, one do. pick in the first round, two in the second. I'm in win now mode because I do see the light at the end of the tunnel. Who knows? It'll be very best. interesting to see what the Patriots do and how they approach the draft. Right. As always.
I'm mean, just got to be fired up for the Pats draft. Draft is the best. Um, I have a spoiler alert. And Nate, I'm surprised you didn't know this, but my spoiler alert, Calvin Johnson is coming out of retirement. Really? He is coming out of retirement. Not to play, though. He's going to become oh. the president of the catch committee, <laughs> the newly formed catch committee. And guys, he's got work to do. His first move will be seek and destroy <laughs> scorched earth. We're going to eliminate the term complete the catch, eliminate the term survive the ground. Is he a runner? Make football move. It is over. We're going to make catches great again Calvin Johnson will implement one simple bylaw if a guy catches it it's a catch that's simple <laughs> they're gonna post that above his office giant executive desk if a guy catches it it's a catch it's very simple if it goes into his hands or chest and stop moving he caught it I don't care about rotations or bobbles or completion or Jesse James be damned that's it now should there be any confusion there is a phone number to call there's okay. an operator standing by he's six foot five out of Georgia Tech and it's very simple because when the call happens there will be a five second time limit on the field you call Calvin it goes hello Calvin was that a catch yep Calvin was that a catch <laughs> nope Click. It is over. That's it. That's it. We've gone from the Calvin Johnson rule to Calvin Johnson rules. He rules all, and we will all go through Megaton. Five second calls. That's all we need. And I, and I think, great. I think I like yup that. and no is about as much as we've heard from Calvin Johnson. It's perfect it. for him. Nate, <laughs> short spoken guy. That's he doesn't it. need to go on. He's going to say yes. He's going to say no. I got to go. That's it. Yeah, that's we can accept. Nah, whatever. Anything he it. wants to say. Five second limit. That's my plan. Even I hope Calvin Johnson Phoenix runs with it. Even a Phoenix hit and Gladiator. Just thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, even better. Just the video you need to speak. You have to talk, Calvin. Exactly sign up. right. Go get it, Calvin. Skype in, Calvin. <laughs> Calvin Catch Committee, CCC. Right? I like it. Yes, Triple C. I love it. My offseason spoiler goes up to the city that we just left, and it goes up to the Great White North. We're going to Minnesota, and I believe that no matter what decision the Vikings make with their quarterback this year, hearts are going to be broken. Look, hmm. they, people are in so many different camps with this one. You've got your Keenum fans, your Bridgewater fans, your Bradford. Let's go through right here. Let's look at the options. Behind door number one is the guy that took you to the NFC Championship game, had this meteoric rise, and is this lovely player, Case oh, Keenum. We got doors. We got doors, all right. <laughs> Behind number two is the guy you've invested four years of his career into. Fifth year, he hasn't even played. You haven't oh. seen him on the field for two years, but you all own his jersey because he took you to the playoffs two years ago, Teddy Bridgewater. Behind door number three, he maybe had the best this. game of the season. Week one against the Saints, he lit them up. And there was this feeling that, oh, my God, Sam Bradford's finally healthy until he hurt himself again. Those roses in their hands? And then door number four is, is the wild card. Give it to me. That's my guy. Oh, baby. <laughs> the guy that's got the golden arm and is going to take a pile of gold to get her cousin's $30 million man. Vikings fans are so torn on this. I spent the week in Minnesota talking to so many Vikings fans, and the first question they would ask is, who's going to be our quarterback? And I would say, who do you want? Uh -huh, and uh -huh. it was split. It was amazing. Really? You have your Keenum guys who are like, this guy did it. He's one game away, and it wasn't his fault we lost. Then you got the Bridgewater guys who are like, Teddy's our guy. Like, he took us to the playoffs. We love Teddy, and it's not his fault he got injured. And then there's these Bradford fans who are like, if They're all there. things are equal, when he's healthy, he's better than all the of talent. them. Yeah. And then there's the, let's roll the dice, let's try something new. Whoever they end up going with, they're going to be disappointed Vikings fans yeah. because if you own the Bridgewater jersey, you might be upset to see them go a different direction. But if you get Cousins, you might say, well, what about all the guys we had here? One quick analogy here. Yeah. The Ravens win a Super Bowl with Trent Dilfer. The very next offseason, they say, we're so good on defense, but we could be even better on offense. Mm -hmm. Let's go get Elvis Gerback. And everyone's like, the Ravens are going to repeat. They got Gerback. It didn't work out that way. And a lot of people say, looking back in hindsight, maybe you should have stuck with Dilfer. Maybe you had something good there. That's the Case Keenum camp right now. You were one game away, and you can't blame that loss on Case Keenum. The defense did not show up in Philadelphia that day. I think if they got Kirk Cousins, Keenum would be the backup, or is he a starter somewhere this league? This I got to think Keenum's a starter now. I do. I don't know about Bridgewater, and I don't know what happens with Sam Bradford because yeah. in addition to Sam Bradford being viewed as a starter, he makes like $18 million every year. Is he willing to take a $3 million contract and fight for a job? He might have to. It's fascinating. The Vikings quarterback decision, to me, it's going to be amazing. And then there's the draft. Who knows? Maybe they go that route. It's a lot of doors. It was like a, a crazy doors. Blues Clues episode. A lot of right. doors. What's up, Steve? I guess Brent. I'm not really going to, but <laughs> quick Kirk Cousins, Triggs, are they, are, are they lining up to sign him? Like, they're, they're all... They all want him, or is he? You know what I'm saying? Like, we're, like yeah, I think there's going to be a real you think market Ar for him. Arizona's going to go. At, they're all going to go yeah. after him. I think you. Yes. Yeah. Follow the ball, right? Yeah. yeah, I do. I think the phone call's made, and his price tag might be too high for a lot of teams. Yeah.